Hi, Jim. It's Vicki, your CNA, and I understand that you need to use the bedpan. Yes, I do. I'm going to sanitize my hands, covering all surfaces until they're completely dry. I'm going to pull my privacy curtain. I'm going to pull it as far as the test observer directs me to pull it. They've given me those instructions ahead of time. I'm going to raise the bed to proper working height. And that's generally about waist level. And the actor will lift their hips with your assistance. They are, have been instructed to lift their hips with your assistance, so you have to cue the actor to lift their hips with your assistance. Okay, I need a set of gloves and I need my toilet paper. <clears throat> and my bedpan. Okay, Jim, I'm gonna go ahead and put you on the bedpan. I need for you to bend your knees, and then I'm just gonna put my hand the small of your back and have you lift your hips up. Okay, alrighty, go ahead. All right, how does that feel? It feels super comfortable. All right, now I'm gonna raise the head of your bed to make it a more natural position for using the bedpan. So the head of the bed is elevated. Now, I'm gonna step away, but at this point I need to lower the bed. This skill requires that I lower the bed before stepping away. I cannot use the test observer for this skill as a spotter. I must lower the bed before stepping away for patient safety. So the bed is lowered, the head of the bed is elevated. Okay, Jim, here is your call light. Call me when you're ready. Here is your toilet paper and call when you're ready. I'm gonna grab a wash two washcloths and head on over to, my, to the sink. I am going to wet one of my washcloths and this is gonna also require that I put soap on the washcloth. No hand sanitizer. The actor needs to wash their hands with soap. It doesn't require a rinse. If you want to rinse, that's fine, but per mostly it requires wetting the washcloth and putting soap on it and a dry. All right, so I wait for my test observer to signal me to return to the bedside. Okay, I've been signaled. Okay, Jim, I understand you're done using the bedpan. Here is the washcloth with soap on it for you to wash your hands. And the actor will do their own hands if you hand it to them. Okay, and here's a dry. Thank you. And I'm gonna dispose of them in the laundry basket. I'm going to raise the bed to proper working height. Okay, and that's about waist level, approximately. Now I'm going to lower the head of the bed before removing the bed pan because it's very difficult for individuals to raise their hips while the head of the bed is elevated. Okay, so the head of the bed is lowered. All right, same thing, the actor will lift their hips with your assistance. If you would bend your knees, Jim, raise your hips. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm gonna lower the bed. Again, I do not walk away from the patient while the bed is elevated. A 
lowering the bed. Okay. So Jim, there's your call light and water, and I'm gonna go uh, empty out your bedpan, and I'll be right back. Okay, hey, great. Test observer, I'm ready for my liquid. Thank you. I'm gonna pour my liquid into the graduate. And for state board testing purposes, the sink can be used as a toilet. In real life, we would never use a sink as a toilet, but for state board testing purposes, it is permissible. I am now going to read my graduate at eye level. That says 225 milliliters. So at this point, immediately, I am going to write my output. I know my gloves are soiled, but it's more important that I remember and document my output, then I worry about soilage on my pen because I need to pass this and I need to be sure that I document it and remember. So I document it on my recording sheet and this is where I rinse my bedpan. Don't have to wash it with soap and water, a simple rinse. I make sure that my test observer has seen my liquid and I now dispose of it in the sink. In real life, again, you would not throw liquid urine down a sink. You would put it in the toilet, but for state board testing purposes, it is permissible. So I rinse my graduate, I rinse my bedpan, and now I dry both. Paper towel will be fine. Another paper towel. I can remove my gloves now. And I can begin by washing my hands. Open the faucet, wet my hands a generous amount of soap, fingers pointed downward. If I have anything that's obstructing my wrist, I need to either remove it, pull, pull it up, or get it out of the way because I have to wash my wrists. Scrubbing my palms, fingers pointed downward, washing my wrists, a minimum of 20 seconds. You can do more than 20 seconds, but you can't do less than 20 seconds and it's a real 20 seconds, not a pretend 20 seconds. You can sing happy birthday twice or say the alphabet, that's generally about 20 seconds. Okay, fingers pointed downward, I've washed my wrists. Now I'm gonna rinse. There's no specific order for rinsing, you just rinse, making sure not to touch the edges of the sink. If you do, just tell the test observer and start over with your hand washing. Now I'm gonna dry my hands. There's no specific number of paper towels for drying your hands. You just dry your hands until they're completely dry. However many paper towels you need for that. All right, now I'm gonna close the faucet with a clean, dry paper towel. Not a wet paper towel, a clean, dry paper towel. Close the faucet and dispose of my paper towel. I'm done with my hand washing. I'm going to wrap up my skill. Return my equipment to storage. My toilet paper. I've already left my call light and water within reach. I open the privacy curtain and I hand my recording sheet to the test observer. And my skill is complete.